Hello, Mariah. Hello, everybody. Hi, Simon. We're here in the white room again. We are now really, really on time. We are trying to be, we are trying to be true to our promise that we are going to do this podcast live, <laughs> and we are trying to do it every two weeks. So every Monday, at the moment, we think that we will do it every Monday at eight o'clock in the evening in the Berlin time or Central European time, and. Um, Yeah, to to explore this radio-like performance more, to um, force ourselves to prepare, and uh, but also to yeah to yeah to f to force ourselves in a playful way to to have a meeting, and we know that it is every two weeks, and sometimes we will have uh, guests, and sometimes we will have no guests, and um, <laughs> so. <laughs> this is it uh, I don't know if anybody is yeah. here but you can uh, we have a chat um, and uh, and we have uh, us and uh, we have our topics and we have you Mariah <laughs> and we have me who is this we Simon that you're speaking of <laughs> no nobody me is and it? me and uh, me and myself and uh, <laughs> My different, oh, my different, I, my, I different my different, my uh, different uh, parts of of brain that is working together or not. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> in Japan, I so think we are quite I, crowded. I, yeah, I, I yeah, we are crowded. There is a lot of meta metaphors in the spiritual practices about how the eye is fractioned. But what is yeah. very funny is that I think somebody told me that in Japanese you have like 10 different expressions for I, depending on what your relation with the other person is. So you have a, mm. an I which is like in the family, you say I, I want to please give me the salt. It's a different me than when you're talking to your boss, than oh. when you're talking to the, yeah, something like this. Yeah. So, Yeah, yeah, the Japanese professor told me that, and I, we find, find it very interesting and, and exotic. You and, guys find it, and he found. I it, would actually. Yeah, he yeah. found it very repressing, and <laughs> he he loved to be in Europe, where you just you have a kind of an individuality, which is uh, right. separate from. <laughs> Yeah, but which is also breaking down lately. I, w I would actually love to share just uh, because now this comes up and I'm looking right at it. It's the text that I used uh, last Friday in the performance Le Petit More, where my character, uh, as far as you could call it, the character is called Monster. And uh, you have to imagine that I am with all the hair Oh. I have long black hair and it's all in front of my face. So there's no face left to see, just hair. And, uh, and the text goes, Lately, when I look in the mirror, I do not see what I used to see. Eyes, nose, mouth, just knots and tangles. I try to speak. I hear many voices. I try to speak and I hear many voices. I have become multitude. I have lost, it seems, the ability to shape myself into one thing, into something, into someone. A wave of release sweeps over me. That's the text. Hmm. Yeah. So you are hearing sounds in the background. I, es I escaped to Argentina together with my small family and we are now in summer and uh, I'm sitting here at the desk of the friend's house and um, opened the window because it was very hot and now there was a little bit of rain so it's a nice fresh air coming in and that I hope it does not bother too much in the life situation it will be <laughs> I don't really I have to figure out It's how lovely. to I have to figure out how to tweak on the sounds but later in the production it will be a little bit without uh, the noise or without noise I would keep all the birds simply. Yeah the ber I think the birds are not going to be It makes me very jealous out. because <laughs> I'm sitting in the night and it's cold and there's a little bit of snow here mm. so Please did you, keep them. Yeah. Did you singing? press on record? Actually, I just. I did. Well, very good. Very good. We are pros now. 
So before I just some small talk. Did you already install Signal Messenger? No, no Signal. I downloaded it, but it's, <laughs> I think it's installed but not set up yet. So uh, I will <laughs> I will signal uh, myself over yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah, you should definitely do it, and you should try to convince your friends. So if Why are we using WhatsApp and Telegram? I don't know. We use it because it's convenient and somehow all these groups popped up. No, We use it because there we have a group with the family and then we have a group for the work, for this, for this, for that, for that. And this is very convenient. But in Signal you can do the very same. It's just that you have to con say to these people, please go there. <laughs> But if uh, yeah. everybody of us uh, um, speaks to the friends and says, or for instance, our uh, we as a Studio Seven Theater, we are deciding to, to we are going to move because we have, uh, I think, a WhatsApp group for our children's theater, for the circus project, our internal group. You know, everything is organized <laughs> with this in, in these groups. And we are going to uh, ask to write a text to all our, our, yeah, our, how do you say, our people, our, that uh, we are going to move away professionally. We are going to move away from WhatsApp and we're asking that all these groups go to Signal, which is also free uh, and uh, doesn't sell your data so or doesn't use your data so much. And right. uh, so you are now selling signal to us. <laughs> I'm selling signal to you. Yes, <laughs> exactly. No, it's also a metaphor, uh, or it's a, it's just one thing. I was, and then on, in the internet, on Twitter or wherever you see, you have these people that say because then, what happened was that WhatsApp, um, or say face, that means Facebook. Facebook issued new data privacy rules which uh, would come would become effective in i think in february and you had to mm. agree to them in order to be able to use it i didn't read these things and i just know that um, last year that it was always clear since facebook bought whatsapp uh, that it was going to integrate more of the data into the whole facebook universe um, so to make it uh, They say to make it more user friendly, you not know, to use these all these things that you can like cross post things on Insta Instagram and Facebook and then on WhatsApp and everything. You no, know? but of course that you also have the contacts of WhatsApp you can use for the Facebook analysis and so on and so on. So it was always clear, but now it's just a it's just like a, an excuse. Now they have these uh, new. Uh, new uh, privacy rules and that you have to agree to and it's a, a good pretext a good excuse to say no <laughs> and uh, a lot of people and then i think it was that elon musk uh, uh, <laughs> wrote on on on, on twitter mm -hmm. that uh, you should use signal and then there was like millions and millions of people <laughs> going from one day to the other like 40 million or something i don't know To, mm. to, to Signal, which of course overcharged their servers and then they went down for, but I think for one or two or three days and then they managed. So, uh, and then people, uh, people um, um, complained about that, that now suddenly all the people are going there to Signal, but we, the elite, we know, knew it all before. Yes, you knew it all before, but it's better uh, better late than never <laughs> and i think one should just jump on the wave and uh, because you can convince now uh, also other people that don't are not interested in these things you can convince them it is just you just download it install it like whatsapp and it's all the same you can also even look for your contacts because it also has this um, it's it's a little bit maybe less has a little bit less features, but I, maybe they will put them in, or I don't know. So this is a, a perfect opportunity to just not only raise the question and say, you can just go there. This is a secure messenger. Signal is not a, pro not a, a product by a, by a big corporation like Facebook, but it's a product by a foundation, and a foundation who have independent money. No? 
So they are not selling, uh, they are running the things on the foundation's money. More I don't know, uh, one has to, one should investigate, but I know that it is pretty independent at the moment. <laughs> and, and people that I know in Germany of the hacker scene, of the, of the data privacy scene are recommending Signal or another messenger which is called Threema. Which you, which you have to buy, which does not cost a lot, but you have to pay for it, which is a good signal, a good sign. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no. Yeah, and it's uh, what I, this is just, a, I don't know, now it came up this topic, I wanted to talk about that because it's a good excuse to think about and uh, t to open up a small window of this data pr privacy things because we are working constantly, constantly now in the internet, uh, not only since the pandemic, but even more since the pandemic. And we, we especially as theater people, we are very naive in, in this. We just, we see that there are these tools, Zoom, WhatsApp, Skype, whatever, and we use it. No, it's also, we, we cannot write our own programs or something. Maybe we can work with programmers together, but this is a other story. So we use these kinds of things, but it should also be in our minds that it's not uh, like given. It's not, it's structures built by corporations. No? And, there's, um, and there is always an alternative to, um, um, to the big programs, to the big software, to the big tools. Yeah. And last thing, last word on that. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, an, ar an argument. What what I heard. It's very because there are people that say, I don't care if I'm if my data is like survey if I'm sur surveilled. You say surveilled if surveilled. I'm under sur if, Yeah. If I'm surveillance. Under sur if, yeah. I, if I'm under. Yeah. This is called capitalism of surveillance. No, surveillance capitalism. This was called in some book. So I don't, I don't care if I'm under surveillance because I don't have anything to hide, some people say. Yeah. But then you, then you, this is a, some, one argument, but uh, it's not an individual topic, data privacy. It's not about you. It is about the society and it's about power. <laughs> it's like voting, no? It's, uh, or it's like before when we had the... We had the sprays in the in the ha hairspray. We had the F FCKW, FCKW, it was called in Germany, which hmm. made a hole in the ozone layer. And we decided to abolish these things collectively because it's harmful. And this is the same. <laughs> we decided also as consumers and as, uh, as, as policy politicians. So, yeah. We have to be aware that we are giving power to these corporations by using these things. Mm -hmm. I actually would recommend uh, uh, seeing this documentary, mm -hmm. ironically enough, it is on Netflix, yeah. um, about social media, uh, where they really go in a very accessible way into this, what you're just uh, saying, yeah. this capitalism by surveillance. And um, the one remark that kind of wraps it all up and that makes it extremely uh, understandable is if you don't pay for the product, you are the product. Mm. Your attention is the product. And um, I thought that was very succinctly put as an entrance into this, just shifting your way of thinking a little f away from this, I have nothing to hide you can, you know, you can, you can see everything what what I do. I don't have secrets. To understanding, I'm being manipulated, and uh, and the world is coming under control because I'm being kind of my attention is being captured and sold and bartered for, and being kind of uh, um, shaped also, you no, know, as a product, as products are shaped. Uh, in a in a mass mass product uh, way. Anyways, this this uh, uh, 
uh, documentary makes it very, very uh, uh, clear in a simple way and interviews a lot of the movers and shakers from the very first um, when these apps were born. YouTube, CEOs, uh, Facebook, of course, Google. Yeah, and I that's heard that... extremely interesting. Yeah, it, that's, it's a very good movie. It's, of course, a Netflix pop uh, aesthetics and uh, documentary, but it's very, very good. It's just just yeah. very simple. In the end, of course, the recommendations are not dangerous to Netflix, so they don't recommend... Uh, look, uh, they don't recommend, for instance, you ha as a European citizen, at least, you can tell Netflix, send me my data, no? Because Netflix is, for instance... Um, um, saving all of your viewing data what did you look at and how long and when did you stop and when did you f move forward fast forward mm -hmm. and when did you move back mm -hmm. and this kind of things and you can have that I, I heard a wonderful podcast in a German podcast which of a woman and she did all she asked all these data from Amazon from Netflix and 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 analyzed it and saw what what they were being able to analyze now and it's very it's just the metadata no it's also in whatsapp it's yeah, the metadata exactly. because yeah. whatsapp it has also yeah. encrypted encrypted messaging but it's the metadata when are you writing at what time of the night to who and no <laughs> Um, yeah, but when is your attention engaged? Yeah, basically. yeah, that yeah. is what they really like. From to, where are you using? No, which is uh, from which city? Are you now? Oh, yeah, you're now in Argentina, and uh, <laughs> no, yeah, this, uh, yeah, 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 and it's it's, and actually that's that's a great um, uh, segue to the theater. You know where where it's 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 going up. It's also, of course, a lot about attention, hmm. but it has a completely different uh, mechanism to understand attention and what you would like to accomplish with kind of grabbing the attention. You know, the the word entertainment literally yeah. comes from entretenir, keeping things in between, keeping you captive in a way, your attention in between things. Which is fascinating yeah. um, and very beautiful uh, literal root of that word has, which has been diminished a little, I feel, <laughs> yeah. in its daily use. Yes, it's, I, yeah, it's it's. Uh, we also spoke about that. I remember very well in our, I think, it was our fourth episode with Adriana when we were speaking about. Uh, yeah, training a exactly. lot we were speaking about this yeah. word, entertainment and i would also like to stress that that it's uh, especially in the art artsy scene maybe a little bit neglected but i like entertainment i like being entertained mm -hmm. and i think it's a very strong thing to entertain but there's these different but that we, that we, we can we can reserve for a later episode also yeah, there are two kinds of entertainment somehow. <laughs> but um, Definitely, definitely. At least two. And now, <laughs> yeah, today, because we said today we are going to touch on some topics, but without going really deeply into it, but like to outlay, uh, to have a, like a brainstorming of ideas, mm. what we are going to talk about in the future. Uh, in some other podcast, yeah, in some other podcast, I was hearing, I was listening that, that that they asked for a feature for some kind of a button, which would say, which would say, now this topic is over, but we save it for for the next episode, and you remember it also. <laughs> so we should, right. we should uh, keep it somehow. Yeah. So this entertainment. Yeah, we will question. put it in our mm. Google Doc. <laughs> yeah, also in our Google <laughs> slaves of yeah. Google. But there is also an alternative we can use. There is, for instance, oh, CryptPad. Tell me, tell me. CryptPad. CryptPad.fr okay. because it's a, fran a French project from a French university, I think. I don't know, or a collaboration. So CryptPad.fr. Okay. It's it looks very different. It looks very like techy or nerdy, <laughs> but it has, bas has mm. basically the same functions, and it's just um, um, mm. yeah. We can also go on CryptPad. <laughs> uh, well, you know, scanning the land. If we if we use that metaphor of scanning the land, 
you know, I would say that uh, um, that we can look at the future, we can look at, at what, what is surrounding us right now, and we can also look a bit to the past, like what happened. And, uh, and they are, of course, extremely connected and rolled into one. And one of the topics that in all three of those perspectives lies really stands out somehow is how theater was exiled from the stage and where did it go and and where is it going and uh and, and what have we what are we surrounded by right now in that situation and um i would love to just firstly also considering that we've been speaking about uh, many of the internet apps the digital apps the digital communication uh, look at uh, this part of where theater went, which is online. Um, and what we can see happening here, or what have we experienced in that, uh, in that, yeah, in that, uh, yeah, how would you say, digital realm? Mm -hmm. Some people say hybrid space. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think hybrid no, space is not I true kind of like because hybrid would mean some something a mixture. No, normally hybrid is like a mixture. Yeah, but I think that's exactly the point, you know. So I d maybe so I'm just so I'm, here. I will, I will. Maybe I'm just this because there are these 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 uh, uh, these bingo words. <laughs> <laughs> hybrid space. And, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> hybrid space. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It is definitely in the postmodern uh, text generator of 2020. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But I do. I feel myself cold using it many times. Actually, that's mm. the th it. It does speak to something for me that is absolutely essential when when I want to speak about both my experience online and what I want to achieve online mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. using online. And it is actually this notion that you are always in the physical space and that it is uh, very powerful to actually acknowledge that being, that presence there, the actual surroundings, the uh, the movement of your body, the, the sound of the voice and how that that then is somehow transferred to what we could call the digital space, which therefore, taking that all into account, you get something hybrid, that you cannot be online without being also offline, is impossible, right? You and I are both at the same time right now. Mm. Yes. And to me, actually, it, mm. it really did open a whole uh, possibility for uh, as, a, as an extremely uh, physical performer um, as a tap dancer um, it, it, it took a while for me to understand okay how can I kind of shift to being present uh, uh, online or in the hybrid, <laughs> hybrid and allowing myself to take this uh, the space where I am physically present fully into account in all my digital um, dealings has really helped me and I think has helped also the exchange to become more full and rich. Yeah, I will, I will ask you about your, uh, the performance which you did last week. But first, mm. I want to um, say that I'm drawing, uh, looking at all this landscape of the digital tools and media and everything. I'm drawn more and more and more and more interested to what we are doing now with radio-like, voice-like, uh, yeah, these, 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 the voices, the, to take away the mm -hmm. image and to have the sound and to listen to. I'm kind of interested in that more and more, of course, because we are doing the podcast. But also, I don't know. Generally, generally, I like this this form yeah. and this return, the, this return of the radio as a side way of. It's not as popular as YouTube, for instance. No. Yeah. But it's yeah. some kind of a side side road or a side stream where there is a lot of creativity going on, and it's just audio and it's just what you can listen what you can listen to mm -hmm. and um, somehow and the, the the interesting thing about that 
um, I don't know, there is different things, but if we if we put out some principles or some things that, that we found during this time is that you can't control, for instance, or you can maybe, but you, you can, normally you can't control how the spectator or the audience is, let's say, consuming your product or your performance, no? Because we have uh, cell phones, we have tablets, we have computers, so it could be that they are sitting at the desk or in the, no? or in the living room mm -hmm. or in the garden or the river or in the toilet or just between, you know. And, uh, in the river. Uh, in the river or... And this is some... Is this a difficulty... Is it, it is first a difficulty because um, you can imagine that the experience yeah. uh, before the experience, I mean, at least for me, I think that the experience is also tied to the space and to the environment and how the spectator comes in, how he is addressed or she and how they come out again. Mm -hmm. no, all this going into the theater or passing through the street and seeing theater life, it's also... This and now you have uh, a lot of different devices, and you cannot really mm. control it. And this is interesting, I find, for the podcast or for the audio, because for the audio uh, content, because it's actually even yeah, it's it's beautiful to think that somebody could walk through uh, through the woods or through a city and having and listening to what you did at the moment, no? <laughs> and to that it right. connects somehow to what you are doing. So there is a lot of there is a lot of wild possibility in the not controlling this part. Yeah, at absolutely. If, especially in the audio uh, uh, realm because you as a spectator you still see your environment uh, and you can walk around mm -hmm. with earphones mm -hmm. and you can yeah. so you have this <laughs> and this is um, I will conclude just this audio thing um, this is what uh, what I find interesting about yeah. all about the podcast I find it really mysteriously fascinating because I also yeah. I also listen to yeah. podcasts in the different moments at my yeah, life me too. and, and yeah. they are they and so I like this, and it could also it is also possible to 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 use it for theater to to take away the image and to go on the uh, and to take other and um, to, I I heard for instance about a telephone performance uh, something like, like this and um, so the last. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there, now there is a, maybe something interesting. There is a, in Germany, I don't know if it's internationally, uh, I don't know. There is a new app which was hyped in a very strange way, but it's called Clubhouse. And it's a, mm -hmm. um, uh, at the moment it's very elite because it's only for iPhones uh, and uh, you have to get invited somehow. So, but it's a kind of a beta phase. And what it is, is it's basically an audio, audio space or audio world where you can open, yeah, where you can open a room, <laughs> you can open different rooms and uh, uh, imagine that you're walking through a street no? and then you have on the left and on the right, you have different rooms and there, there is, a, there is a, a, a sign which says what is going on in the room, for instance, the White Room podcast or this is a topic about democracy or whatever. And you pass through this and you see all these topics and you can also see through the win window of the street. Of the, the, you can see who is inside. So there's spectators inside and there's speakers inside. Listeners and speakers. No? And then you can decide to go into one of those rooms and you are, you are in the audience. You sit in the audience like, virtually. No? So you become automatically mm -hmm. member of the audience. And there is like four or five, I don't know how many people speaking at the moment. They're on the stage, uh, virtually. And then you can also, through a button, you can raise your hand and uh, the moderator can say, okay, come on the stage. No, they can uh, activate your microphone and then you can take part in the conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then you can go away from the stage. And this is also a very interesting... Uh, I find it as an idea, I find it r really interesting to have these kinds of discussions, podium discussions, where people also join in without any... Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, very nice. But who's moderating? 
every it, you Those, open uh, a room and you you moderate it. No? Ah, this okay. is, I think yeah, this yeah, is the I idea. Yeah. You can you open yeah. a room, you moderate it. You oh, can, it's very lovely. Wow, can, I yeah. like it a lot. And uh, maybe we should I'm also. I'm actually downloading it right now. Yeah, but you need to. I, I don't. I think you need. It's not open for everybody at the moment. I don't yeah, know. I see. I see. But you can reserve a place and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the yeah, the part a critic. Uh, this is the critic part of it. That is so that they made a kind of a strange start and. All the in Germany at least all the elite journalists and uh, and uh, influencers of whatever kind that they are they post they post uh -huh. the screenshots of themselves being in this clubhouse thing. But when it gets available for everybody, then maybe it's an interesting yeah. tool to experiment and then it with. Will it will lose its appeal for the elite <laughs> cultural elite. Yeah. <laughs> then the people are going to take it and. <laughs> And we're going to speak yeah, exactly, about uh, exactly. dirty jokes and uh, football, soccer, and <laughs> mm. yeah. So yeah, very yeah. nice. But uh, you know, let's. Uh, I would like to speak a little on this uh, uh, performance I did exactly um, uh, what you were saying about the podcast and the audio uh, that it's um, you kind of accept with audio a certain freedom of the spectator, actually the listener in our case. Um, and this relaxes also your uh, approach to the podcast or to the, uh, to the medium because you accept and you give lovingly this freedom to the listener to be vacuum cleaning or uh, biking or walking or doing other stuff. And, um, and with digital performance, when you try to... Uh, engage more of a uh, more of the senses, let's say, so both the eyes and the ears, and then also the uh, with the understanding of text, and then maybe going to this hieroglyphic constellations of character and narrative or dramaturgy. You have a whole different um, challenge. So now, like in a normal theater, it is actually really important how the full attention of the spectator is engaged. And um, as you rightly put on the internet, you don't know. You so don't know, yeah. You don't know. Yeah. And you also don't know <laughs> the circumstances and, and what is the... Uh, so what I we see, took I, very I, seriously... I, I, I just see myself... I look at something and normally when I look at something I eat while I... <laughs> No? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I look on YouTube, I watch a film yeah. or whatever, and I'm eating at the same totally. time, and then I'm distracted I mean, that's by television this television behavior, right? It's, yeah, yeah. It's coming from television. Mm. This yeah. this kind of <laughs> uh, kind of uh, easy attitude towards what is uh, and mm -hmm. you're chatting and uh, yeah. doing millions of other things. Um, yeah. Also and, with this idea that I can replay, right? Yeah. If I, yeah, yeah. If I miss something, I just replay ah. it. So think, when you're yeah. doing a live. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. you make your point, and I have uh, also something which I'm. I wanna, well, if yeah. it took uh, because I'm going, I'm ah, no, forward yeah. with my it's, arguments. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's. I was thinking this the other day that it kind of relaxes, as you said, to mm -hmm. think to not being able to control it. We we uh, there could be the danger that we relax so much that it it's that it that we move from artistic choices. Figuring out the details and uh, working that it's all that the dramaturgy mm -hmm. has some kind has a necessity to it, that it's not only arbitrary, that it's uh, no. So we have a kind of a, yeah. there is a kind of a, a red line or a driving force, some kind of yeah. A, yeah. yeah. And then we have the other part which you could call anything goes. It's all yeah. in the moment improvisation, and um, so this is a kind of a struggle, I think. Well, I guess I guess it's not so much a new struggle as that it brings into perspective that you, in the end, as artists, are fully responsible. You know, it it and it has been for f if you record music and make a CD, mm. it's always been like that, right? You have you you work on your product and then you throw it out, but you know you have to be solid, and there will be no direct feedback about that. It will come much later. Mm. And in the in the internet, I think it it has led to a 
huge barrage of of very mediocre stuff, which also does not pretend to be more than that, right? Many of the YouTube films, they are not wishing to be anything else than amusing, um, actually, to be honest, attention grabbers. Here we come again to the mm -hmm. attention <laughs> Uh, uh, economy, <laughs> right? That's that's their yeah. main purpose. Yeah, their main, the in uh, just very <laughs> the influence. Um, I think somebody said influencers are people that sell adver advertisements. So they yeah, try to sell totally, products, totally. and they need you. Yeah, and it's not <laughs> a fair fair sell. <laughs> you know, you're you're being sold something under cover of something else. And mm. but anyways, it, it I think it's it's mainly that for theater people like yourself it might be it might be a bit of an adjustment you know that that now you have to make your product com you have to be completely self-supporting in your um, responsibility there's not going to be an adoring audience you know bursting into applause that will you actually when you make a cd you never get that satisfaction or mm. validation or so so it's something maybe a bit new to theater, but known to people who make uh, products like uh, CDs or films or, you know, this, uh, this like being alone in your workplace and make sure it's good that uh, mm -hmm. it still is there. Uh, but that's a bit of a segue to the actual point I, I wanted to make is that, that we realized when we were making Petit More, which is like a performative offering, a sharing. Who is we? Do you have to um, just explain a little bit? Ah, uh, yeah, that's so true. So we is uh, is the five performing artists that are gathered under the name Crop. We are all coming from Cross Pollination, which is a research platform for independent artists. Um, and Crop is the production house, so it wants to uh, help these artists to make to share their work basically in whatever form that might be workshops or um or performances or as now in these times an online performance and um the big challenge for for this group uh is that we were very sure it was not a good idea to make a digital version of a of a normal theater play you mean a digital version what do you mean like a film, like, or like a video. Make, uh, yeah, or. exactly. Like make a registration, mm. ah. or or even think the same way as you would yeah, to yeah, make yeah. A, a normal uh, performance. Mm -hmm. So, but what is that new way that you have to think? And this aspect of the audience that we were now talking about was very, very crucial as well as this hybrid, uh, the notion of hybrid space. So so you perform, you worked on a performance and uh, you presented it last week. And it yes, was in Friday. the framework, in the framework of a kind of a, of a festival symposium, no, organized by friends in Great Britain. And exactly. uh, so this is more or less the, 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 the framework. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's useful. Um, <laughs> so it was the and oh, first and, it was and only the... time to uh, perform it. Up to now, yes. Up to now. Yes, mm -hmm. it was, you could say, a tryout or yeah. a pilot mm -hmm. performance. Um, yeah. And what, what was and the name? What was very... Uh, le pe uh, petit more, le petit more. Uh, mm -hmm. No, sorry, la petit more. We went through all the variations in spelling that particular name. <laughs> La, La Petite More. La, La French More. <laughs> at the halfway hotel. <laughs> La Petite More at the halfway yeah. hotel. La Petite yeah. More at the halfway hotel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, uh, uh, it's, it does not really have a story. It has more like a premises, a situation, which is that there's this apartment building where different uh, uh, a people live and at one point they all at the same time stop to breathe for no particular reason maybe it just became too much or it was just too heavy or whatever 
and they stop to breathe. And then they are waiting, suspended, and they are waiting for something to happen. But what is it? Can be anything, something earth shattering, an orgasm. So that is that is kind of the situation that the uh, that we are sketching. Of course, born from this quarantine uh, uh, times, and um, what there was a couple things that we that we were convinced of, and one is that in an unknown place like this digital space or this hybrid space, nobody knows where they are. Not the performers. Not the spectators where are we have no idea definitely not at the theater so the first challenge is how to connect on this very unknowing and very human because humans never know anything really you know on this very human level of not knowing where we are to connect and start to build a place build an environment where we could with some willingness say ah we are here and where is that here? It is the H halfway hotel, which is just a name to <laughs> kind of attach to that shared space at this particular moment through this crazy medium. And it really reminds me a lot of what uh, our friend Gonzalo, who does a lot of street theater, says that when you're on the street, you are in actually also in the nothing, you know, there's no theater there. You have to build it with every single person of the audience that you are gathering. You have to make this agreement. Ah, we are in a theater now. Okay, we stand. Okay, we bring our attention. We give it to you. Oh, okay, to you. And then he can start to play. And we we try to do something similar to that online. And... Um, and it's interesting, Simon, that you were saying you don't know what your audience is doing. But with Zoom, actually, you do. Because you're staring into each other's rooms. So you used uh, Zoom. So uh, how... We used uh, Zoom. People, yeah. audience yeah. went onto Zoom. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they were yeah. all like visible. Like it was like a big Zoom conference. It was, yeah, it was like a Zoom mm -hmm. conference or it was like the Parliament of Practices uh, if you if you remember that situation where you know everyone is uh, is uh, 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 present, mm -hmm. but we did have the very first thing that happened was Jonas, the musician, who sang a very very compelling song mm -hmm. that's extremely beautiful and you think oh my god he should never stop i don't need anything else just don't stop so this was a, was like a first very sensual way to gather people people's attentions mm -hmm. and their willingness right and then in this kind of zoom building we say it okay welcome we are all here you are here we are here and we are looking into each other's rooms but we are also all inside the halfway hotel right now and it just it's quite simple gesture mm -hmm. but it offers and sometimes you don't need more than a simple offer right mm -hmm. it offers a uh, possibility for people to say yes i'm with you in that strange place so you massage them with something compelling and then you give them the offer and there were 40 people present and 40 people stayed present for one and a half hour mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of performance. And of course, we cannot say that during all the performance they were as intensively there as, uh, as in that first moment. Mm -hmm. Probably not, but it was clear at the end when we switch on everyone's cameras again, something has happened with these people, that was this mm. release that you know mm. from performance. No, mm. it's a did you uh, rosy cheek? Did you then? Did you like perform? Was it like did you had? Yeah, a, you performed for one and a half hours, or did you have some kind of uh, open talking yeah. or whatever? Uh, no, 
no, no open. We did. It's actually interesting because we we planned uh, a mix of um, monologues combined with workshops. So every character was responsible for one monologue and a workshop that kind of represented a different stage or phase in the performance, which was quite ritualistic. You know, it was like become present in your body with breathing exercises, make a journey in your mind into your imagination with a guided meditation. Then we see you the did film the, this together. Was part of so the performance. Oh. Yeah, this was ah. all the phases of the performance. Uh -huh. and, uh, we see a film okay. uh, that is edited, pre-filmed mm -hmm. uh, scenes that were very visually rich and also rich in text. And then uh, uh, we do a drift with the monster. So we are we are kind of in this unshaped space. Now we don't really know anymore an you where mean we an are. Improvisation. We, yeah, an improvisation, mm -hmm. a physical improvisation. Mm -hmm. then a um or with the hands actually just the hands and then we sing a song together and then we do karaoke so we party basically <laughs> this was the setup but we we actually decided okay let's not do those workshops because it felt so complicated and a bit messy so we just did the monologues that and and uh, How, what do you mean you decided you decided when did you decide before or during um yeah before <laughs> when we did ah, okay. the run through we were like oh my god no this is too much technically and too, much too much or too much uh, time i guess mainly too much uh shifting in the energy what you are asking from or what you are mm -hmm. uh, uh sharing with audience <clears throat> with the spectators Yeah. So in the end, we decided, okay, we dropped those uh, interactive moments and put them actually all in the party that was afterwards, the karaoke and the dialogues. I th yeah. Zoom is a, a tool which we mm -hmm. started to use. Totally. Some, somehow pff, everybody started to use Zoom. And then we noticed that we could do also some interesting things like performing or rehearsing and Yeah. And it's interesting. Rehearsing first, it's, of course. Yeah. It's interesting, also the features of Zoom. But I ask, uh, and, and then um, I think what we also learned is that there is, yeah, as you said in the beginning, mm, to just present a piece, it's somehow not really respecting or not really no. enjoying the medium of or the, the space of internet. No, so exactly. somehow we need to have an adaption or an Uh, a transition translation of the experience in the form of something different which we could call interactive or some interactiveness I would so say, some kind of response you know, Simon, i would no? say i would say what you need is is very open eyes to what is really there and what are really the possibilities you know and what is really lacking so this notion of okay we are not in a theater we don't have a theater to go to so where are we is a really important, uh, I feel, yeah. uh, realization. So what is lacking? It's where are, we? where are we together? What's our togetherness? What is our shared space? And, um, and indeed, as you say, the interaction is a really strong point of, of Zoom, for instance. And you yeah. can see 25 people in the eyes. Mm -hmm. that you can do that in, in so easily in the theater because you have all the other stuff going on. Yes, yes. But here you basically see a little picture mm -hmm. and they're very focused. Yeah. And you see each other's rooms. This is beautiful. No, it's, it's very intimate, actually, very quickly. Yeah, sometimes too intimate. The, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes too intimate. Absolutely. <laughs> I think so. This is one one. Yeah, this is one part. I think that I think that if you when you work like you did, what is fascinating me is in the podcast world and also in the YouTube is, for instance, the chat. Very simple. I already said it in, in with Felix. Hmm. Why is it so fascinating for me? Because it's some kind of an immediate response to the audience. Yeah, simultaneous engage simultaneously so they form a kind of a community so the community in the internet with all this in youtube it's different than from television or from radio because you have some kind of a 
audience which is defined by and you can play with that and you should somehow you should play with it you should take it into account and and and, and form and work on this relationship and this is i think where you can where you can so in the internet it is a uh, yeah. uh, yeah, you should. You, you can work as a theater, especially on this on this relationship, uh, and take it into account. It how do, how does your people come into, and how do you? So the Zoom room is is is, is good as a principle to have some kind of an um, of an interaction or some kind of a presence and that they, they know that they're together. <laughs> I think also it it is interesting that that this old very tested and true uh, phases of the ritual kind of presented themselves to us. Like nobody put them there, but suddenly you look at the scenes and you're like, oh, okay, we're actually following exactly these five steps of ritual uh, or the phases of ritual that uh, that have been described by uh, 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 people like Turner. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's quite an astonishing thing to see that because nobody was thinking of ritual, but just by going through those uh, uh, like what do we need here kind of uh, questions it it turned out like that and I guess you know as with the chat I think one big challenge and a huge fascinating adventure is how do you introduce a tool like the chat in a way that it can become something else than what is the spontaneous first inclination yeah. which is yeah, yeah. commenting, mm -hmm. uh, exchanging funny uh, emojis or, or actually mm -hmm. chatting about something completely different or, mm -hmm. you know. And and I think that is uh, one thing that we, for instance, with the parliament have seen also that when you are engaged what is going on in the screen, people are not really using the chat mm -hmm. in this very focused mode of engagement. Then when you release people start using the chat a little. Mm -hmm. But then when you grasp that moment to actually shift the focus completely to the chat, it then awakens some uh, possibility there that people jump to. You know, we, we made huge writings in the chat, collective writings or big lists, you know, gathering, uh, gathering impulses or gathering ideas on this chat and and then it becomes something completely different than the than the normal uh, uh oh my god look at uh, <laughs> you know mm -hmm. look at what they're OMG. doing or, or oh my god he's <laughs> yeah omg <Lol>. yeah <laughs> or lol 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 yeah mm -hmm. so i find that really that, fascinating that these yeah and the second problem what i want to describe is what i was thinking about mm -hmm. last time also the problem of flow what is really annoying me is hmm. when you introduce technical devices and also it happens also when you do it on stage, on the theater stage, you, you, hmm. you, you work with more complex technology, maybe, I don't know. And you really have to work on it to make it, to make it, yeah, to make it flow. No, it's not about only making it perfect or making it look good. This is no. not maybe the perspective, but to, to be able to shape a kind of a flow. And this is what's really annoying yeah. me about all this working. On, and this is what I want to ask you and, and also to pose as a question that um, I think I find it very difficult to, as a performer and also as a spectator, to experience something like, like a flow mm. Through these in these uh, uh, in these medium normally because something it, it just takes too long to the, the transitions take may, sometimes too long and then there is a and then there is this for instance if you use zoom and then and then you have for if you use the sharing your screen thing to show a video or something and then you have this suddenly this the screen is coming up and then you have to put play and but you see the play uh, you see so uh, some mm. <laughs> it's something it interrupts you know, me and uh, so this i find this yeah. uh, did you did you uh, find we worked uh, flow really hard on this or, yeah really hard mm. so 
Normally, the, the conferences, the conferences on Zoom, they are sometimes terrible because something does not work, and there's the yeah. flow is really a big yeah, problem. Yeah, that kills I think. it. Uh, yeah. I think I think this was one of the things I'm I'm quite a little bit proud of how that went with us. Mm -hmm. And I have to say I spent three whole days, literally whole days, uh researching and working with Alice Motta, who has uh, agreed graciously to be our Zoom captain, our concierge at the hotel and uh, and take care of or of you know All the videos were screened through her. Mm -hmm. All the audio were were shared through her, except, you know, uh, when for for some solution we had to hack the system a little. You know, Adriana had to actually film her computer screen to be able to put a video in a Zoom window parallel to a performer, which actually was a it looked really beautiful because it became a little bit more analog because of that um but i think what was extremely successful was that the smoothness of each transition barring maybe a couple of moments where a performer was maybe not ready for like two seconds which feels like forever or where a film stopped and the window was still kind of spotlighted so you had a uh, a still there But um, but mainly the transitions were very beautiful because they were juicy. They were prepared. So when the film ended, the pre-recorded film, Andrea, one of the actors, she took the spotlight screen seamlessly. So the film ended and boom, you have Andrea live kind of repeating the last thing she said on in the film. Are you there? Like really straight into the camera and then taking the audience with her in this live experience or interaction. And this went seamlessly on to kind of a juxtaposition of a performer with uh, with the video. And, and beautiful images, actually. And the thing that really made it great for me is that we went technically through the zoom with the spectators you know kind of embedding it with this story of we are in a new space and we need to know all of us we're doing this together so we need to know also a little bit how it works and how we can navigate here so let's go on a little tour a little adventure and and we did some settings and one was always show full screen and then you completely hide or you lose the controls of the screen so you actually have a full screen of video nothing interfering with the image and these little things made it so much better for the spectator that you don't see you know halfway hotel is sharing her screen it is ugly green uh, <laughs> you know that just disappears Yeah, this is and it why, gives something back yeah. of the flow of uh, this is yeah experience. This is why I think this is where you thought about how the spectator should look at it, at least on their screen, no? And yeah. you can accompany also a performance or something that you that you created and you want to share. You can accompany it also with a, a tutorial or with a in, how do you say this? Yeah. Uh, the 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 yeah. uh, the for, when you have a medicine, there is the The sheet, the paper, how how to use it. Yeah, It's yeah, called yeah, Beipack yeah. Zettel yeah. in in German. What's, yeah. the, what's the name in English? Yeah, Beip yeah the instructions. Zettel. Yeah, Beipack Zettel. <laughs> I love that Beipack Zettel. <laughs> Beipack yeah, Zettel. Totally. So you should you should give and, it a Beipack yeah. Zettel and you should say so to experience our performance or whatever in the best possible yeah. way. Do this and this and this. Use headphones. Use a, a big better, screen or Simon, small screen. You, mm? You become, uh, you you become, how do you call that, a accomplices. Mm -hmm. So you can say, you know, in this space we have to work together. Yeah. <laughs> because it's unknown, and you need each other. So you actually engage uh, uh, their actions mm. as a necessity for everyone, not just yeah. for their experience, but for the whole performance to succeed. This moment to be. 
And I think that worked really nicely uh, uh, Friday, actually. Mm. And it's very human, you know. It's this like we're all fucking around with Zoom all the time, and mm. and this strange space it be become so familiar, but nobody knows how it works. And okay, let's you know, guys, let's just <laughs> figure this out for now. And it builds a bridge. Yeah, because we've all been there. We've all been cursing Zoom. At mm -hmm. one point or the other, you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I once uh, we wrote a text and I came up with this idea of, uh, so let's investigate a poor theater with high tech, tech <laughs> with you know, let's imagine that that we're not looking for the best possible technology and this slick uh, Hollywood effects and whatever. No, we we still need. You know, just a couple of lights, mm. a good space, and the uh, and the attention of each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think I agree. And um, I think going on a little bit, moving forward, we should keep this topic also. Um, and I want to pose also as an example, maybe, although I didn't participate because I was traveling to Argentina mm. at that time. But some, I want, I want to um, investigate a little bit more, maybe even also with a guest, if I can get somebody. So we have in Germany the, the hacker community, the Chaos Computer Club. And they, every year since 30 years now, make a big congress. This congress uh, is uh, last three or four days. And it's happening always between Christmas and New Year. And it's always mm -hmm. in a big space in, Ber uh, in Leipzig, I think it's now, in Leipzig in Germany. Oh, nice. And yeah. people from everywhere come there and there's like 10,000 people or 5,000 people, I don't know. I never have been there. Um, and But I know I heard a lot about these meetings and there is a lot of uh, what you can, you can see. Um, or one part of it is lectures. So you can see very interesting lectures about technology themes or data privacy, but also funny things mm -hmm. like... I don't know, mm -hmm. some, uh, yeah, funny, very funny things. Also, um, uh, politically interested comedians or, uh, so, uh, very interesting, good things. But this is only one part and the people who are there say this is the most boring part. So this input, this content <laughs> is, is the most boring. Yeah. What's the most interesting part is that it's a very chaotic and at the same time, uh, like a really uh, uh, emerging, <laughs> emerging um, experience and an emerging festival because it has a lot immersive no no emerging or emerge, emerging okay, emerging okay. not right, immerse, right. emerging like you have put okay, good. you yeah. put a lot of things together and something emerges some culture emerges okay. some and yeah. this is and they are proud of that there is so much different spaces and different small workshops and different and a lot mm -hmm. of people going around and they're inventing something or they're showing something or they're and there's music there and there's podcast people there and there's people working on the computer there and and all mm. and they're all awake all the time and <laughs> you know like a festival <laughs> like a real festival but and a lot of different people come yeah. there now it's not only computer people but also yeah a lot of different people so and this this mm. experience is it, is it online is no, no, I said no, it's every year. Uh, oh, yeah, in uh, Leipzig. In yeah. Leipzig or before it was somewhere. Yeah. And so in this year, these people were, were also, of course, fa facing the, the, the uh, impossibility to do this Congress live. Mm -hmm. And these people who are the hackers, who are the nerds, who are the computer people, they had to find an answer to the question what to do now with with. With, with an event that is not be it's not possible to do it in the presence in the presence of mm -hmm. people so and a lot of some of them said no it's not possible we should just leave it because it is important the thing about the lectures it's interesting but the most important thing is being together there and also mm -hmm. have the possibility to run into each other accidentally and to no 
all these things that we yeah. are, we don't have yeah. in this world of the pandemic we have to plan everything we have to go to this conference and to this room and to this zoom and you don't have this corridors where you just bump into each other and oh i didn't see you since or who are you no mm. these uh, yeah. these accidental meetings which shaped mm -hmm. a big part of our lives normally it's very difficult to have them at the moment <laughs> Um so uh, they were faced with this question and some of them said no and but then they decided yes we will do something mm -hmm. and what they did and this is interesting uh, is they did a congress and there was this one part so it was all online no all online uh, it was called remote chaos experience um Normally it is called mo normally it is called the Chaos Communication Congress. Now it was called Remote Chaos Experience, and there was the one big part was all the streaming um, setup. Let's say so there were different there were of I don't know three official streaming rooms or streaming um, channels, and then there were a lot of different spaces throughout Germany who also had their own program running, no? So different channels of mm. streams, of videos where you could see lectures or talks. So this was the boring part for <laughs> the inside. <laughs> and then there was the other yeah. part. Normally they have tickets, and this time they also have tickets which were uh, for free, but you had to book a ticket. Uh, and what happened is they created something which they called the RC3, RC3, Remote Chaos Experience, World. They called it the world. No? And it was, mm -hmm. imagine old uh, Mar Super Mario, uh, something where you, uh, or Zelda, I think I remember Zelda. No? Zel Zelda, the old Zelda, <laughs> before 3D. Yeah. No? Which yeah, was yeah. all... It, yeah. They built running, a world, uh, yeah. running games, running, and in this two-dimensional two world where you can go, no, and you can go in, inside it. But it's very, and they created a world like this, so an interface or a, or a space like this, a two-dimensional world, like a video <laughs> game, and you could <laughs> enter, and you had you choose your avatar, also your your how do you look and your name, and then you could move like in a video game, in this world. And what they did That's was so they, they reconstructed all the spaces that they want to have. So no, the, so there were toilets, there was a, a cellar, and the cellar had some hidden doors which lead to the heaven or whatever. And, <laughs> so it, and it was, uh, I, I just heard it, I heard it from other people, that it was incredible to just walk around this two-dimensional world and find out all the gimmicks that they put there, all the strange things, the rooms. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then the other feature was that if you bumped into somebody else or into a group, maximum four or five persons, then automatically a small video conference would pop up I don't know how this right. looked like, but automatically it pops up a small, I think, Jitsi conference where you talk to each other and you see each other and say, hi, how are you? And then, no, I have to go now, I have to see that. And you go away. So you have this, you, they somehow rebuilt this experience of bumping into each other and of uh, just wandering around. Uh, and there were also spaces where you could then listen to the lectures, <laughs> no? Um, mm. So this is the basic idea and I really would like to um, hear from somebody who was there and to talk about this a little bit more because I find it very, very interesting. <laughs> uh, and, uh, definitely, I, uh, definitely. In ge generally, the, 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 yeah. It, hmm? it, it reminds me a lot of the, of the multiplayer games, right, uh, where uh, people would spend significant parts of their lives actually in these multiplayer games and uh, and of course the game was there to spur on the flow of uh, actions but for many it became a very social place and uh, you know our, our one of our mutual good friends even met two of her husbands <laughs> in 
in that place. Mm. And uh, uh, it's it's actually, I think it's as old as the internet. And it sounds like they had a great time um, recreating something that they knew more from proximal space, which is quite interesting for a hackers community you know, that they that they would actually almost go the other way around usually yeah that it would be so used to these digital spaces that uh, um, would have no um, uh, boundaries to them okay what other topics uh, I wanted to uh, maybe this is also a good thing talking about rhythm uh, we need. To, we will make uh, some other episode about rhythm. I think we should do. We should talk a little bit more about rhythm. And I am particularly interested in in looking a little bit more at the at the music. And um, but also somehow what is what I'm missing a little bit also in this podcast is we maybe we need to repeat and gather also some insights or some thesis that we made during other episodes and. No, you know, kind of uh, re re recover it and re repeat revisiting the revisit yeah. these theses because I remember that we were mm -hmm. talking a lot about rhythm, and I would, yeah, kind of uh, uh, revisit this topic and talk about the, the the phenomenon of swing and in this part also the ph the, the phenomenon of flow maybe out of this, and uh, mm. and this is a very interesting thing because this is I. Uh, difficult for the online performance or for the online for being in the online space because yeah because of what we talked before because of the difficulties of the flow and um, also of the latency mm. for instance so it's a very uh, it's a but you are thinking specifically about really actually playing music like playing jazz and letting it swing yeah yeah i'm talking first about what is swing for this a groove, no? What is this? Uh, how how can we? How did it appear? <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and this is uh, how does it how how right. how does it appear? And from that, uh, of course, because of the motto, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing, which is also a very a good motto, I think, for performances. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because definitely. Have, I mean. Definitely. Mm. I think, you know, without indeed going into the topic already, but uh, uh, again with Gonzalo, I've, I'm preparing actually a work demonstration pretty much on this topic of, uh, of um, the syncopation. Actually, not so much the technical syncopation, but the, uh, we call it the craft of rupture. Mm -hmm. And it's basically this... Uh, um, this action that you can do to create a rhythm and then break it. Mm -hmm. And we speak a lot about the easy, that it's easy to confuse the rhythmical, technical abstractions of beats and syncopations and uh, um, with the actual thing, which you could say swing is the actual thing. And the broken triplet mm -hmm. is the abstraction that helps you understand, but does not mean a thing <laughs> to mm -hmm. stay within the, the vocabulary. Yeah. Because seriously, if you play broken triplets and say it's swing, you are not swinging. Yes. You're yeah, counting, which is something <laughs> completely different, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I yeah. think there is something interesting there. And it does not... It does not uh, um only happen in music it happens the same for clowning for the technicalities of accidents you can do it perfectly and not swing right yeah. it will it will not be actually giving this life of the accident it will be a perfectly orchestrated fall from a chair yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i think this is one of the things that we that we the, one of the yeah, red threads also for us that we say this is important to kind of to perceive and to understand and discuss, talk about, because mm -hmm. it enriches your, yeah, the, 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 the perceiving a performance. If you look at it 
at from this point of view, but not then mm. you are facing this technical and uh, beyond technical problem and then you can mm -hmm. talk about it in a different different ways and like maybe also what we could say is that it somehow breathes now it breathes a rhythm breathes mm -hmm. or a performance is breathing so this is, it has a lot of implications which yeah, yeah. which can lead to yeah it's really to, fascinating to yeah. um, <laughs> um and this is maybe yeah I have just not not so many more uh, topics here, but what I would want to talk about in some moment is what I started. So when we think uh, talk start to talk about rhythm, and then we start to you can describe it technically, you know, you have the counting and what it is, what is the syncopation, mm -hmm. what is the swing totally when you write it down, but actually to do it. You need another kind of language. <laughs> you need to have a, uh, like a language which, which, which activates your, which activates another part of your brain and your, in, your imagination mm. and your yeah. sensibility, your sensitivity in another way. And uh, these are often like metaphors, no? Or often things like if you say it has to breathe, no? The rhythm has to breathe. Uh, one could find different images. You have, of course, a lot of images for mm. teaching tap dance, mm. for instance. Yeah. How you? Yeah. And this is last time when we met. I was talking about scientific approach, and I was mm -hmm. talking about that how I I'm fascinated and fascinated by scientific approach by scientific ration by science and rationality and how important mm -hmm. i find it to 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 be more rational <laughs> to uh, mm -hmm. to have more uh, doubt and productive doubt and also yeah to use uh, logic and to to um Uh, to use also scientific methods to yeah to describe things basically because because of a lot of bullshit which is around and in theater where we have another kind of a language uh, a work a, a language with, which enables us to 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 be imaginative to imagine to to be creative which does not function rationally or which has to speak to other parts than rationality no and um But what I sometimes, and I want to ex ex explore a little bit this, this, this tension also in our lives, because I wonder that, uh, <laughs> I think that uh, you should know when you, when you use which language. And sometimes, mm -hmm. I so sometimes the metaphorical, symbolistic, imaginative, suggestive language is not the right one to describe, for instance, mm. what is happening at the moment in a pandemic or I don't know. No? I know that sometimes as, a, as an artist, I tend to look at the world and describe it or understand it in, you know, in some form, philosophical way or something. This is <laughs> one approach. And then there is other methods which describe the reality more productively <laughs> so you can actually learn learn something about it and this tension i find interesting we were speaking also with um, christopher shaw uh, touchstone theater in the usa he was t speaking about something like theater of facts <laughs> so hmm. um where you the beauty of the beauty of facts the beauty of facts Two plus two is mm. four, and these things. But then we also have in the, in the yeah, we mm. have the other side. Uh, we have also I the have so of the many things, Simon. <laughs> Sorry, I ha <laughs> we will speak on this, but I, I just have so many things. It kind of awakens. In, for instance, when you say two plus two is four, that is a fact, right? And I'm thinking. It's also a, an agreement, not the fact that two plus two is four, but the habit of seeing that as the most useful way of approaching that particular situation. 
right? Because if you only do the simple act of turning it around, four is two plus two, it gives a completely other universe. So the enmeshing, the entanglement of what we perceive as facts and these choices that actually shape a lot of their impact and how they work in our lives and in our thoughts, I feel is extremely subtle and very, very, very difficult to uh, to grasp, especially when you're getting into debates and dialogues and, and it's it's very tricky. So when when these kind of uh passionate uh embracing of factual stuff and rational stuff as mm-hmm. as the thing kind of forgetting that there's a lot of choices wrapped into these systems. Mm-hmm. Right? Which makes it a very powerful mechanics that for instance a system like neoliberalism has used to fantastic success to become the touchstone of reality for a big part of the world you Mm -hmm. know now is not the time for uh, luxurious fantasies like social (laughs) justice now is the time to uh, you know stick to the facts and uh, uh, embrace the harsh realities of economic uh, fact you know it it is and it it literally has gone like that since the 90s Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this was, of course, they, they are lying. I mean, this is a. But this is another <laughs> point. Yeah. They are lying. They're, they are they're, lying, they're, but they're, they're, they're wrong. <laughs> That's not the facts. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But yeah. the, but they are yeah. also uh, but, uh, using a mechanism that is very mm-hmm. compelling. Yeah, but uh, maybe also I want to talk about working language. Mm. Yeah, because, that's this one. Yeah, uh, we use in theater irrational working language and we use different working languages and I find it very very nice and beautiful and interesting things that you use how yeah, to activate imagination yeah, but then absolutely. you and then you have a process which is activated which is um, yeah you and it's uh, difficult to to express it also sometimes in words mm. I absolutely. I, I'm. I'm very curious, and I want you to press this button of. We'll come back to this later. <laughs> what you actually mean when you say these are this? Uh, we have a lot of irrational. Do you mean like things like energy? Yes, like As energy. Irrational. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Energy is yeah. such a. Yeah. Because yeah. then people talk to or me presence. about energy and presence and oh, what 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 is it? Of course. Or intensity. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe intensity. Okay, presence, energy. And then there are people that say, no, I can heal you with my energy. No? And I say, that's bullshit. But uh, I know that there exists some things like energy, but what is it? No? You can, and you can talk yeah. in different ways about it. But what way are you talking? Electricity yeah. mm-hmm. or height yeah. energy, potential energy? And you can, you, can, you can, I think we can benefit a lot to, to, to explain ourselves more and to, to doubt these, mm. uh, what these, these, and then these of magical course, words. Yeah. And then of yeah. course we know that in, if we want to teach energy or to, <laughs> to, then we cannot use the word energy. We have o- other metaphors no? or other ways of producing or inducing yeah. energy. Like for instance, in my karate, in my martial arts practice of karate and, uh, Kobuyutsu, and also in forms of theater, energy appears when you stand and you lift your heels just a little bit and you you move your weight a little bit forward. So mm-hmm. as to be totally. not in... But this uh, is relaxed. physics, no? This is physics. This is, this is physical physics. energy. Yeah. So it is there. Yeah. It exists. It's real. Yeah. This is maybe the point. What what uh, what what, yeah. what interests me yeah, is that we nice. talk. Yeah. We have working language which works with images and irrationality to induce real things. And I like this duality, and I like to to also to yeah to be able mm-hmm. to to see these two sides, and um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and also how they how they have to kind of work together, yeah. because there is, I think, very little th- you can say without, in some level, being metaphorical, right? Even a lot of the words we use are actually literally physical 
uh, metaphors, especially in languages like Dutch and German. It's mm. like full. Our understanding tied to these metaphors of uh, physical experiences. Even this sentence tied to the metaphor of physical experiences is, you know, a very clever uh, metaphor that we have become so used to that you yeah. don't even hear it anymore. So, and I, I think I, for I think, and I think a, a wonderful. I think for me there was like a like a crack opened when the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. Because I realized holding hands and hugging and being present with each other at the moment is not good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, and other people, especially artists, maybe were saying, ah, yeah. we need to come together. Or I remember very much one moment in uh, some, I don't know which event it was at the beginning of the pandemics in the USA, some event, maybe, I don't know some of the Democrats, or I don't know. And one of the speakers said in a very emotional way, said, now, don't be afraid or don't have feet. Let's all, please now take the hand of your neighbor, no? <laughs> and the mm. people were, were, were like this standing, hmm, uh, I don't know. If we should, we should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, presented with a, with a fact that you cannot yeah. tackle with your imaginative language and with your metaphors i think uh, it it i think that there that it was very good to experience that also mm. to learn that there is not one um, one method for per, for describing or perceiving what is going on at the moment and what, what you should do you no know? yeah uh, but there's different yeah <laughs> different perspectives and at different moments so and yeah furthermore in this i'm interested in what is also effective in theater so what is really right an effect what has an effect and what is just yep. um, yeah yeah definitely speaking about it. i mean from teaching yeah yeah it's it's very true and i think in when you are teaching a specific technique it's it becomes like a micro laboratory of this this whole uh, topic actually because you're always looking for those images that you can see immediately help this particular group or this particular body uh to understand and to reach back to something known and have the right entrance to be able to transform that experience into something useful for a very different action or very different yeah. technique in the way that, you know, the experience of jumping uh, with a with a rope, you know, as you do as a kid, becomes an extremely useful memory, physical memory, to know what it means to tap dance. Mm. Because there's something so similar, so related, that you can take that thing yeah. and kind of sh turn it around, tune it a little bit, and hey, presto, <laughs> you know... They're dancing mm. a particular thing, yeah, or or one particular part of the experience. Mm. It's really fascinating, uh, little laboratory. Yeah, we explore. We will explore that. One more example is maybe I heard before that there is some kind of a center in your body. No, you have a body center, and then all the movement comes from the center. Whatever, no. <laughs> and Which this, is, yeah, yeah, and this is. When I was uh, like 18 or 19 or 20 or I was and maybe taking part in a workshop and they were speaking about this center and I imagined the center and but it was not happening because what was lacking actually was I didn't have enough for, for, I needed more muscular training also to be able to to address this kind of center or whatever so there is a kind of a, mm -hmm. a gap between the metaphor and the actual doing of something and uh, I think this is, <laughs> yeah, this is also part of this mm, discussion yeah, of yeah. working language and totally, yeah, and mm. and also what makes the task of the teacher so endlessly fascinating. <laughs> that mm. You have to find exactly what is right now, <laughs> not in two years, not last year, but exactly now, mm. which can be very, uh, uh, very interesting and very surprising, actually, quite. Uh, 
quite strange things can uh, can appear when you open to this way of uh, of thinking. Um, I think there was another topic on maybe the last one. Um, what you can, and then we can wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. So the last one, and this is also fueled by this uh, uh, past time, and I will stretch out a little more. Is uh, is about how to deal. Uh, it actually rolls out of this being exiled from the theater. Not thinking of the digital uh, now, but thinking of really where can we perform? Um, and also when theaters open, what is going to happen uh, to the independent scene and the, and the free uh, producers of performance and music and dance? Um, when there is such a mountain of uh, work already made that's still waiting to be shown, firstly, and the precariousness of the cultural system as a whole, you know, with, so what will happen to the programming um, in the theaters and how could this maybe uh, make the need and and uh, so urgent that we will find other ways to organize ourselves as independent uh, uh, performers and artists, kind of the way that we found a way of of working as uh, in the research with cross-pollination. But what does it now mean for the sharing of work? You know, this almost disappearing of the stage and and does it open our eyes to another you know, may, maybe it feels a bit like we've been freed from a cage also you know and and the things that we can do and the things that we can share are now more free than ever to uh, find other other uh, environments Mm-hmm. Yeah. That are maybe not performers at all. Maybe they are not in the theater or any kind of stage. Maybe they really start to invade other parts of life and start to, uh, you know, as with, with the, the group embracing the unknown, that's part of the Parliament of Practices also, a little working group that was investigating all this year how do we. Uh, enter into the unknown what are the techniques that can really help us not thinking about singing or doing theater or or making a tap dance but thinking of how to enter and deal with the unknown how to be be curious to it how to explore it and uh, and actually take take joy in being there mm. which could be a very interesting uh, 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 possibility, or how you say that knowledge how, uh, to share with uh, with people from outside the arts, who, as anyone, are also extremely faced with a lot of unknowns in their lives, or maybe should wish to, or or must actually be able to face that in the coming times. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So let's wrap up. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys, all of you for listening. <laughs> and um, I think we, we, yeah, we see each other in two weeks again, maybe with a guest, maybe without guest. And we yes. will, I think we will have a more monotopical discussion then or bitopical. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So. <laughs> Or and topical fluid. <laughs> and now I think today it was also the stream. It was not so really. I, I heard there were some glitches and something, but it's because I have at yeah. the moment a quite a unstable internet. So sorry oh, for okay. that. And it will improve. Everything will improve this year. <laughs> um, right. Right. And um, do you want to have any last words? 
Oh my God, last words. I hate last words. And no, I'll just say, see you next time. Yeah. And looking forward to it. Great. It was good yeah. to start again. Yeah, this is the, was the first time this year. And uh, me too. I'm also, I, I, I like this little project. <laughs> yeah. This podcast. <laughs> and um, we'll see how is it going this year every two weeks so see you in All two right. weeks and uh, yeah, goodbye okay. for tonight hmm? okay